Hey all, Space Colonizer here. I'm making this video in response to a disturbing trend that I've started to notice in the retro speedrunning community. The most recent version update of the NES emulator, Messen version 0.9.9, .9, added a feature known as Run Ahead, which many have come to believe is undetectable. This belief is false, and I will demonstrate exactly how Run Ahead can be detected later in this video. Unfortunately, moderators of a growing number of NES games are banning Messen, motivated by this false assumption. I consider this to be a great tragedy because Messen is one of the most accurate NES emulators currently available, and I do believe that it is worth saving. Let's start with a quick explanation of what exactly the Run Ahead feature does. Run Ahead makes it so that any time you press an input, the game will simulate what things would be like if you had pressed that input X number of frames earlier. Here we are in Super Mario Bros. and Run Ahead is currently set to zero. As you can see, things look pretty normal. But let's see what happens when Run Ahead gets put up to 10 frames a second. Now, when we jump, Mario is already in mid-air. That's because the game is acting as if I pressed the button 10 frames or earlier. Setting Run Ahead to 10 was, of course, an extreme example. This level of Run Ahead is obvious even to the human eye. The issue is when Run Ahead is set to a small amount, like 2. Now, when watching in real time, you probably can't tell anything is different. This is due to the fact that emulators already have a certain amount of input lag, and a small amount of Run Ahead only reduces that lag. But luckily, we don't have to rely on our limited human perception. There is an important clue that has been on screen this entire time that can be used to detect this difference. The input display. Now let's switch to a game that I know quite well, Jaws. I've got the input display turned on and the run ahead is currently set to zero. So let's just go ahead and get a shot off. Okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and set this to one run ahead, do another shot, and then now set it to two run ahead, and get another shot. And now I'll go ahead and throw this into a video editing software so that I can look at it frame by frame. You don't have to put the video into a video editing software. Any method you have for being able to watch a video frame by frame and you'll be able to measure these things. All right, so here we are. This is the part where we checked that the run ahead was set to zero and then we just need to get up to the first shot that we were going to do. Okay, we want to find the first frame of the input. There it is, just go back one just in case. Okay, there we go. And then from the first frame of the input, I'm going to count how many frames until I see the harpoon. One, two, two frames. From the first frame that the input was registered to the first frame that we see a harpoon. Okie dokie, so then now we're at the part where we are adjusting the run ahead to just one, and then we're gonna do another shot. Find that first frame where the input was pressed, just double check here, yep, right here, and then one, ah, only one frame ahead this time. So before it was two frames from the input to the scene, the harpoon, now it's just one frame. That's because we set the run ahead to one. Okay, so then let's check the, uh, what it looked like with two frames of run ahead. Gotta find that first frame with the input. Okay, double check. Yep, first frame with the input is also now the first frame with the harpoon because it used to be two frames and then we did two frames of run ahead, so now it's zero frames. Now it's occurring on the exact same frame that the input occurred on. So there you go, folks. That's how you can detect run ahead. As long as the input display is turned on, not only can you determine if run ahead was turned on, but by exactly how many frames it was turned on. All you need to do is first establish a baseline number of frames from input to visible action. Now let's go ahead and apply this knowledge to an actual run. All right, so this here is my recent JAWS world record of a 307907. Uh, I did run it on Messen, and I had the input display turned on and the frame counter, although that's not really what we're looking at here. 
So we're just going to go and find a few shots and measure how many frames after my input the harpoons appeared. So first shot should be right about here. Okay, there we go. That's the first frame. One, two. Hey, two frames. Exactly what we would expect from zero frames of run ahead. Let's go check out another couple of shots, though. Okay, there's the first frame. One, two. There we go. Let's find another shot. One, two. There we go. And there should be another shot coming up pretty soon. There we go. Okay, here's the first frame. One, two. There we go. So two frames from input to harpoon. What we would expect from zero frames of run ahead as uh, was already established when we figured out our baseline. And there you have it. That's how you take a run and check to make sure that it didn't use run ahead. The run just needs to have input display and then you need to be able to watch the movie frame by frame. Now, if there's anyone out there thinking, oh boy, that looks like a lot of work, I'd like to remind you that you only have to measure the baseline delay once. And then once you've figured that out for your particular game, you can write that down or memorize it. I don't know if the two-frame delay is going to be universal for all games. That's clearly the way it worked for the game I decided to, to show here. And so, you know, maybe your game works a little differently. And then also on top of that, depending on how militantly you defend the sanctity of your leaderboard, you probably only need to apply this level of scrutiny to top tier submissions, right? Uh, you don't have to do this for every single run that ever gets submitted on Messen, just ones that are competing for whatever your game would consider a, a good time or a good spot. Another point I'd like to address is that all these videos were captured at 60 frames per second. That makes it so that we can see almost every frame. When a video is captured at 30 frames per second, which is fairly common, things get a little more complicated, but run ahead is still detectable. I'm going to make a follow-up video covering 30 frame per second detection, but I wanted to keep this video under 10 minutes. Regardless, people really ought to capture at 60 frames per second. And that's not just an emulator thing, console players as well. We can't get accurate frame counts when we can't see all the frames. But I fully understand that capturing at 30 frames per second helps reduce CPU and upload bandwidth usage. I used to do it for those reasons myself. So it probably wouldn't be great for the community if we made 60 frames per second a hard requirement. So that's all. I've demonstrated how run ahead can be detected and measured so long as input display is turned on. I don't think it's fair to ban an entire emulator just because a feature is available. After all, there are countless features on many emulators that people could potentially use to their advantage, some of which are actually undetectable. For example, in Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles for the NES, Memory Watch could be used to see if you'll get the Technodrome to spawn in the correct hole. Ultimately, the best way to claim that you didn't do this is to have a history of attempts that don't arbitrarily reset the game before you've even started and have some runs that get you to the wrong hole. But we don't ban those emulators just because the feature exists. If we did, Nestopia would probably be the only allowed emulator, and that ranks lower in terms of accuracy. We should want more accurate emulators to be used. Super NES moderators on some of the most popular games seem to have the right idea on Run Ahead. Legend of Zelda, A Link to the Past, and Super Metroid, for example, don't ban the emulators, only the feature. There's no reason we can't have the same mentality on NES games. For some of the games I moderate, all I had to do was say, for emulator runs, if the emulator has an input display feature, it is required that it be turned on. A clear one sentence rule that doesn't apply to any specific emulator. So, if you are a member of an NES games community that has banned Messen due to the false assumption that Run Ahead cannot be detected, please consider sharing this video with your moderators. 
And if you are yourself a moderator who has banned Messin from your game based on that false assumption, I hope that after watching this video you will reconsider that decision. If any of you are so inclined, please consider joining my Discord. There will be an invite link in the YouTube description. I will have a text channel titled Save Messin where we can discuss this issue and share updates. Thanks for watching and have a good one.